Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing some technical analysis on Bitcoin, a couple of altcoins, and the cryptocurrency markets in general. Because guys, in the last couple of days, Bitcoin has been doing very well. It's jumped about $1,000 in the last week, added $15 billion to its market capitalization, and brought another $30 to $40 billion of market cap back into the cryptocurrency markets in general. So in today's video, I want to analyze Bitcoin. I want to do some technical analysis on Bitcoin, talk about some formation and some indicate some formations and some indicators on the Bitcoin chart, and talk about some of resistance that I think we're going to see coming into the next couple of days and into the next week or so. But guys, before we get into that, if you enjoyed today's video, definitely consider dropping a like, hitting that subscribe button and smashing the notification bell. We do cryptocurrency videos every single day and I wouldn't want you to miss any of them. So let's get right into it. Bitcoin is currently trading at around $6,700. If we refresh this, that's going to be a little bit lower. This page has been up for about half an hour at this point, but its daily volume is doing pretty well. Uh, it's, it's, it's daily volume is about 4.6 to $4.7 billion and it's up about 1% in the last 24 hours. It has a market capitalization of around $115 billion. We talked about that just a second ago. It's added quite a lot of market cap in the last little while and we're up like 15% in the last week. Bitcoin has been doing very well. The entire cryptocurrency market right now is rather neutral. This is one of those days where we don't see a lot of correlation. We don't see the entire market red, the entire market green. We're seeing some red, we're seeing some green, we're seeing some big losers, we're seeing some big losers, some big gainers. Mithril is up 18% and I think I saw like a negative 17% down here somewhere. Yep, right there. Negative 18%. Syscoin is doing very badly. You guys may have heard about the news with Syscoin, so that might have something to do with that. But Bitcoin is doing all right over the last day. Bitcoin's dominance is currently at exactly 42%. You guys may be aware that 42% is the answer to the life universe and everything. That is a very nice number to see. I would like this to start coming down though. We've talked about in previous videos how Bitcoin's dominance going up typically correlates with Bitcoin's price action going down and the market capitalization of all the cryptocurrency going down. So when Bitcoin's market dominance is going down, that typically signals that we're seeing a rally. That is just normally the correlation. It's kind of an inverse correlation there. That's something to keep an eye out for. We are back above a quarter of a trillion dollars. That happened a couple of days ago though. And 24 hour volume for the market is doing all right around 15 billion dollars let's go ahead and jump into bitcoin's chart so what we see here on bitcoin's chart we see a lot of things here on bitcoin's chart i've got a, i'm looking at like seven different things that i want to explain to you guys in today's video there's not really a specific thing i want to talk about i basically just want to lay out a bunch of different technical indicators a bunch of formations and a bunch of different ideas i have for this chart and where i think it's going in the next couple of days so you guys can make your own educated opinions on what you think is going to happen over the next week or so so that you guys can make your own trades the first thing that I want to talk about is Bitcoin's little formation that's in right here. You can see these two trend lines right here. If we zoom into the hour chart, those make a little bit more sense. What we're seeing here is that Bitcoin is currently in an ascending wedge pattern. This is a pattern where you have an uptrend of resistance and an uptrend of support. Currently, we're getting a lot more trading around the uptrend of support than the uptrend of resistance, and that's not exactly a great sign. I think it would lead to healthy consolidation for the reason I'm about to explain. What you normally see with an ascending triangle pattern, and if you guys aren't familiar with ascending triangle patterns or, or ascending wedge patterns, excuse me, I made, I made that mistake in the last video or in a video earlier. What you normally see in an ascending wedge pattern is you see a bearish breakout of it. If you guys aren't that familiar with ascending uh, wedge patterns or triangle patterns in general, we have a video up here in the top right. I know a lot of you guys are new to cryptocurrency, so I want to give you guys some resources so you can continue to learn. Hopefully that video will help you, but in that video I explain that. But essentially what we're seeing here is an ascending wedge pattern. And when we're seeing a lot of trading around the, uh, around the level of support rather than the level of resistance, that also leads me to believe that we're probably about to have a bearish breakout here. And considering it is an ascending wedge pattern, that would make sense because that's the way this chart normally plays out. That would indicate to me that Bitcoin's probably about to retrace another $100 or so in the next 24 to 48 hours. And that kind of makes sense if we come out here to the day chart because that would mean that Bitcoin would retrace back here and test this 21 day or this 20 day exponential moving average or this 21 day simple moving average, the 21 day being this white line right here and this other color being the 20 day exponential moving average. I'm expecting Bitcoin is probably gonna have a little bit of a break and have a little bit of support down here on one of these two moving averages. We talked about these moving averages in a couple videos. They're very important moving averages. Typically when Bitcoin gets above one of them, that signals a rally. And right now for the first time in the last two months, we have actually gotten above them. So that's why I do strongly believe that a rally is going to happen. But we could see a little bit of healthy consolidation back and test one of those. If that doesn't happen, that's perfectly fine. Now is still a great time to buy Bitcoin, especially for the next rally and especially for the long term. I'm not telling you to buy, not telling you to sell. I want you guys to do your own research. That's why I make these videos after all. But I, it would be okay for Bitcoin to have a little bit of consolidation. But after some of that potential consolidation, what I'm expecting to see happen is that we're probably going to get more resistance up here at $6,800. As you can see, we have previous trading around $6,800. That used to be a level of resistance. And if we zoom out here, we have some more resistance back over here. Some more trading kind of around $6,800. It's not a perfect level, but we do see some trading around $6,800. 
that's going to be an interesting level of resistance that I think we're going to see coming into the next couple of days. Something that I would not want to see happen, something that I would very, very not, very much not want to see happen is a double top up here at $6,800. Uh, $6, that would be, that, that right there would be a very bad sign because that would be reminiscent of a pattern that we saw a little while ago. Let's see, where is it on the, ch it's right here. Back here in early June and late July, we saw a, or excuse me, in late uh, May, we saw a similar pattern to what we're in right now. We saw an ascending, uh, it wasn't really a wedge, this was actually a uh, trading channel, but we saw an ascending trading channel like this, and we actually saw a flat top where we topped out, and we saw a massive crash the next couple of days. I do not want to see that happen. If we do come up here and we see a similar pattern form here, and we double top out here, that would be a very bad sign, because as you can see, this high is a little bit less higher than this one was to that one. I don't know if that made any sense. The distance between these two highs is a lot greater than this one, so it looks like the market is cooling off a little bit. I do not want to see this double top out. That would be a very bad sign indeed. If that happens, I'm going to be quite a bit more bearish, but we'll see. If we can break through $6,800, I think we're going to be fine. If we do break through $6,800, what I'm expecting to happen is Bitcoin's going to come up here and test this 50-day moving average, which is this kind of bluish line right here. This 50-day moving average is also going to be lining up with the price level of around $7,000. Now, I've talked about in the last couple of videos, you can watch one of them up here if you're interested, what, uh, why $7,000 is an important level. I've, just, I've kind of mentioned it in, in passing, but it's becoming a more important level as we approach it. $7,000 is what you call a big even. And a big even is essentially just a number that has three, three zeros or more in it, for Bitcoin anyway. If you see a number that has a bunch of zeros in it, if it only has one number in it that isn't a zero, then it's a big even. $20,000 is a big even. Uh, $7,000 is a big even. Even something like $10,000 or even $15,000, those are big evens. You normally see a lot of trading around those because people like to set their price levels and their price targets at big even numbers. That's just a, that's just a factor of mass psychology. And that's something you have to understand when trading in cryptocurrencies because there aren't as many bots in cryptocurrency as there would be in something like stocks where it wouldn't matter as much. So $7,000 correlating with this 50-day moving average is going to be an important level of resistance to look out for. I want you guys to keep an eye on that. But if we can break through that 50-day moving average, I do think we're going to come up here and we're probably going to test this 100-day moving average as well. What I'm expecting to happen in the next couple of days is Bitcoin to come up like this, maybe get a little bit of a drop down here, maybe not so drastic as that, come down, test one of these moving averages again, and then come up here to $7,000 over the next couple of days, maybe into the next week, and really get resistance at it. It might break through it. If it does break through it, I want it to come down and get support on the 50-day moving, moving average and come up here to that downtrend of resistance in the um, in the uh, descending triangle pattern. That's what I'm looking to happen on Bitcoin anyway. Now, guys, one thing I want to cover before we move on to some other stuff is that the 50-day moving average is a really, really important indicator. It's a really important indicator. This blue line right here, you can watch. This hasn't been as big an this hasn't been as of important of an indicator in 2018 as it was in 2017. But in 2017, there was a lot of trading around this indicator. As you can see back here in uh, November, when we pulled back to 5,600, we got support on the 50-day moving average. Back here, when we first kicked off the rally that ran all the way to $20,000. We got support on the 50-day moving average. We got support on the 50-day moving average back here. It was typically a moving average that you saw Bitcoin breach. It broke the 50-day moving average, hit the 100-day, got above the 50-day, then got support on the 50-day, and then went on a bull run. That was the trend that we saw repeat like four times, where Bitcoin would break the 50-day, get support on the 100-day, break back above the 50-day, support on it, and then rally. We saw that same pattern happen like five times. And if we can see Bitcoin get above this 50-day moving average, get support on it, and then break through the 100-day, get support on it, that's definitely going to signal a bull run to me. And I mean a full-scale bull run. If we can see something like that happen, we could definitely see a very nice bull run if we also manage to get above this downtrend. That's basically what I wanted to cover on Bitcoin today. In yesterday's video, I talked about how uh, Ethereum, how Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and EOS are all getting resistance on their 21-day moving averages and their 20-day exponential moving averages. And I've talked about how that is kind of a bearish sign. We don't want all five of those altcoins, considering those are the next five altcoins by market capitalization to gang up on Bitcoin and all start acting bearish when Bitcoin is acting bullish. You want mommy and daddy to be in agreement. You don't want mommy and daddy to start fighting because if mommy and daddy start fighting, you as the trader who is the child, uh, you're, you're not going to have a good day. So essentially, we want Ethereum to break out of this 21-day moving average and get above it, which is something that we're kind of see, seeing happen. Ethereum got a little bit of support at this downtrend a little while ago, a couple days ago, about yet, well, yesterday, actually. And it looks like it's going to test this 21-day moving average and this 20-day exponential moving average, try and get above them, and then maybe come back and get support on them in a similar fashion that we saw to, to Bitcoin. We would definitely like Ethereum to do that. If Ethereum gets on board and gets bullish as well, that's a really good sign. That's going to help Bitcoin push through that level of $7,000 that we've been talking about and also through that level of 6800 that we've been talking about. We want Ethereum to be more bullish so that it can help to uh, bolster Bitcoin. Bitcoin can't start a bull run on its own. It just, I mean, it can, but it's not going to be as easy as it, as it would have been a year or so ago like it used to be. The market just isn't the same way 
a, mar a lot of times, guys, markets will rhyme, but markets will never mirror. That's an interesting quote that I've, I can't remember who said that. But a, a market, a market may rhyme, but it will never be a, it will never mirror. I think I'm misquoting that, but I think I forgot who I, I forgot who quoted that. But anyway, I'm on a tangent. That's a good quote, and you guys should keep that in mind. Two markets are never going to act exactly the same, but they act, they will act very similar. Anyway, that's what I want to cover for technical analysis today. Let's jump over to this news relating to Malta. Now, guys, as usual, I'm not going to go too in-depth with this article. I want you guys to go read this article in full. It's not that long. It's going to be linked down in the description. Or actually, I'm not going to link it in the description. You guys can go look this up. It's on Cointelegraph. If you type this into Google, you'll find the article. Essentially, what this is is Malta passes blockchain bill into law, confirming Malta as the blockchain island. Now, guys, if you've been watching news with cryptocurrency for the last six months to a year or so, you'll probably have heard the word Malta before. If you don't know where Malta is, Malta is a teeny tiny little island about 25 miles south of the island of Sicily. And if you don't know where Sicily is, Sicily is in, in Italy. So this is a little island in the Mediterranean, a little bit north of Libya. And Malta has been very, very friendly to blockchain and cryptocurrencies in the last little while. And it's been one of the pioneering uh, states to actually work on regulatory clarity for the blockchain uh, ecosystem, which is why you've seen a lot of exchanges like Bit, like Binance and OKX actually set up headquarters, not necessarily headquarters, but set up operations in Binance. They were in Binance in Malta. We've seen a lot of uh, blockchain startups and a lot of other cryptocurrency uh, projects working out of Malta because Malta has actually tr has actually tried to set up some kind of legal framework for blockchain technology, and that's essentially what this is about. Now, guys, I've talked about four pillars of a four pillars of a bull run before and four things that we'd like to see uh, to come into the market so that we can actually see a bull run. And those things are adoption, awareness, regulatory clarity, and development. If we see those four things continue to improve, that really just skyrockets the intrinsic value of the underlying industry that we're investing in, that being the blockchain industry. We're not getting a ton more adoption. Adoption has actually probably been going down over the last six months because the price has been going down. I've seen that in my YouTube analytics. You can see that everywhere. So adoption isn't necessarily doing that great. Awareness has done nothing but continue to improve. A lot more people are aware of Bitcoin right now than they were a while ago. Now, there's different ways you could define awareness. So depending on how you define that, it could be going up, it could be going down. That's not the point in this. Regulatory clarity is another important one because you want actual big companies like Binance to be able to function in a proper way, in a properly regulated ecosystem. And you also want big institutional investors to be okay with moving into the space. So regulatory clarity is a really big pillar of actual uh, bullish price action for Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency market. So that's what this is really bringing. This is helping to bring regulatory clarity into the space so that investors are more happy to actually move in and so that this is easier for um, blockchain startups to actually get their feet off the ground and development is the fourth pillar. We've of course been seeing continued, to de uh, continued development. Lightning Network has been continuing to grow. We've seen all kinds of new developments in other altcoins and in other spaces. We've seen a lot of new technologies continue to be developed. So I do think Bitcoin is going to be doing pretty well. But as far as this article is concerned, essentially what's happened is, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, the Parliament of Malta has passed three bills into law that established a regulatory framework for blockchain technology. A local news outlet Malta Today reported on the 4th of July. The bill includes the Malta Digital Innovation Authority Act, the Innovative Technology Arrangement and Services Act, and the Virtual Financial Asset Act. Uh, the three bills that will regulate distributed ledger or DLT technology or distributed ledger technology or DLT have been approved by the parliament and, and have been enacted into law. So this is a this is an interesting development, guys. Like I said, I'm going to let you go read all this on your own and go research all this on your own. We don't have a lot of time left in the video for me to do this, but this is something interesting that you guys would probably want to look at. If you guys haven't already, go ahead, drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell as well because we make cryptocurrency videos every single day here, and I wouldn't want you to miss any of them. But that's going to be it for this video. If you guys haven't already, go ahead. Go ahead and join the Discord server. There's a link to do so in the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. You can also go follow me on Twitter at CryptoJeb, and you can also follow me on Instagram at CryptoJeb if you're interested. I post semi-regularly over there. You guys will probably get some good value out of that. If not, that's fine. You don't have to follow me. I, I, I see how it is. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Tell me in the comment section down below what you think about my analysis. Do you think I'm right that I still be in still believing that a, that a rally is going to happen? Do you think I'm right in saying that Ethereum needs to break its 21-day and 20-day exponential moving average to see a bull run? happen or to see ethereum help bitcoin start a rally tell me in the comment section down below what you think of the market as a whole and as always guys that's going to do it for this video and i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace